here in the U.S., we see a very large rise in participation during the Olympics and a lot of people going out and trying curling. Uh, does the same thing happen in Japan during the Olympics? Does it, you know, is there kind of that curling fever that everyone gets and uh, you have a lot of people coming out to try curling during the Olympics in Japan? Yeah, re- that's a really good question. And uh, yeah, Team Fujisawa is really, really popular in Japan now she they becomes. And gra- even from the 1998 Nagano Olympic game in Japan, and then 2002, 2006, so every four year, Japan needs carrying the scene, get become a little bit popular and getting popular and popular. As you know, 2018 in Pyeongchang game, Fujisawa got the bronze, and that was kind of very big fever at that time. And also 2022, so they, Fujisawa will participate in again. So, yeah, we are expecting to have that movement again. This episode will,、uh, will go out、um, just right after the women's tournament starts in Beijing, and Team Fujisawa is back、uh, representing Japan.、Um, we kind of touched on it a little bit, but just, you know, How much attention does curling get during the Olympics in Japan? And then how popular are Team Fujisawa's games when they're playing on television? So it is very nice that、uh, Japanese TV broadcasting is really, really familiar with curling and interesting and very, also say, friendly with curling. So they will pro- broadcast all the games. So it means that at least nine games, three hours. That is huge, huge exposure of the curling in the Japanese scene. And also, because they see lots of curling on TV, so very naturally they are really interested in curling. So maybe the most popular one is figure skating. So, the Mr. Hanyu,、mm-hmm. who is a Gold medalist of the 2018 and 14, he's just amazing. So, everyone is interested in the, how he performed in Beijing as well. But、uh, I think curling is、uh, something next to the figure skating. So, it is, we may say that is hu- very, very popular. The, the people that are just now getting into curling or get, getting into it just because of the Olympics.、Um, I don't know if I'm understanding this correctly. It was one of, one of the people I follow on YouTube, on、uh, Twitter, was explaining this to me. But can you explain the concept of pond and how that,、uh, how, how that relates to the people who are just getting into curling or in, in Japan? So maybe it, it must be a little bit the same with the United States as, as the United States. Curling boom. So Movement is a kind of the once in four years in 2006, 2010. But、uh, the story g e t a little bit changed from the 2018. Curling became really popular. So, watching curling really popular in Japan. And every year, Japan Curling Championships and also World Curling Championships、uh, is broadcasted. By NHK, so public broadcast company. And we can see all men's and women's world current championship game from TV. So it is huge exposure. And、uh, people continuously become interested in curling every year. But、uh, as you mentioned, that of course in summer, in winter, so people will forget about curling. And also some people. It's just interesting in the team Fujisawa, not for curling. So, in order to deepen their knowledge and also interest for the curling, I decided、uh, to start a YouTube channel, kind of JCA, Japan Curling Association JC, a YouTube channel to start a kind of program called Curling Pond. Yeah, it is surprising you have a Similar name, so Locks Across the Pond podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I see some similarity. But、uh, the concept of pond is that we, we may also say it is a swamp. Okay. So once people get into 
death, so <laughs> really hard to escape. So it is a kind of analogy of the okay. poem. So once people get familiar and interested in, in and become a calling firm, really, really hard to escape from that. <laughs> so we cannot go out. And also I invited some of the top athletes like Yamaguchi, Yoshimura, and they are really cooperative to this program. And we are all enjoyed. 